Okay, let's look at a plain mirror reflection example so we can understand how to trace out where an object's image is uh, for plain flat mirrors. This is not something that you're going to be required to do too often, but it's important to understand what to do. So what I want to do is I want to trace out where I think that reflection will be, where this point's reflection will be, and where this point's reflection will be. And then from those three points, I should be able to make out where the overall object's image is, or the image of the object. So understand that if we're looking at this one bottom right corner of this L, which is my object, understand that there's going to be an infinite number of light rays coming from afar, coming from the sun or the, the light source, hitting this object. And at this one single point, at least one ray of light, and there will be many more than just one, but at least one ray of light will travel and hit this mirror. When it hits that mirror at that location, you need to draw a normal line. Remember, that's a spot perpendicular to the surface. And based on the law of reflection, the light ray will reflect off of this mirror so that the angle is equal. Now what I try to do is I try to make my incident ray one style line, my reflected ray another style. So if my incident ray is a solid line, I'll make my reflected ray a dashed line. It really doesn't matter what you pick. And this is not a rule, this is just helpful so you yourself don't get confused with all these different arrows. And that's not going to be enough information for me right yet because you're always going to need at least two rays to determine where the image is because your eyes need to trace at least two rays back to where they believe it believes to be the point of divergence or convergence, whatever, whatever you prefer. So now, again, there's an infinite number of rays coming off of the same point. At least one of them will do this. And, and I could have picked down here. I could pick anywhere, really, as long as it's not the same angle. And again, at that location, draw a normal line, and then have your ray reflect off at the same angle. Now, if you have a protractor, you should take the time to measure that angle, but I'm not going to do that right now for the sake of simplicity. So I basically will have this ray of light going infinite distance that way, this ray of light going an infinite distance that way. And if I situate my eyes so that I am capturing that light, so maybe my eye is like this, and it's going to trace these light rays. And what it needs to do is it's going to find where these light rays appear to have originated from. And they don't appear to originate from the mirror. They appear to originate from the spot in which they diverge from. That's why I call it the point of divergence. And so what you, your eyes are going to do is it's going to trace these rays back assuming that the rays originated from somewhere behind the mirror. This is why we end up seeing images inside the mirror when we're looking at a plane mirror. And so, you know, without using a ruler or a protractor, I've got a pretty decent idea where this point's reflection is. And it's where they appear to have converged from right there that's where that point appears to exist now that's still not enough to know if my entire L is there for example will the image of the L look like this will it look like this we don't know enough information yet we just know that one point of this L is there so we've got to find more spots so let's go ahead and take a look at this back left corner of the L I'm gonna look at this zone right here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repeat that process. At least one light ray will travel and hit the mirror and then it'll reflect off of the normal line perpendicular or equal to that angle. Right about there. And then another ray will hit a mirror and then it too will reflect amongst its own normal line such that the angle is the same. And again, not enough information. Our eye, if it was placed over here, will see uh, the rays where it thinks it originated from. So we're going to trace these rays backwards and extend those lines as far as you need to until you see where they converge from. And uh, i got to fudge my lines a little bit. This looks like it's way too steep of an angle. So that's more like this. That looks a little bit more appropriate. Still a little steep, but a little bit better. 
Same thing here. This this angle is too high. If I used a protractor, I'd be able to get this a lot closer. And so we see the spot right about here. Still not quite enough information, but we're getting there. I'm going to go ahead and do the last spot, which is this top portion of the L. And I'm going to pick the back corner. At least one ray will do this. Reflect off the normal. Such that the angle is very similar. Well, such that the angle is exactly the same, actually. Use a protractor. Maybe this ray will do that. doesn't matter which point you pick, as long as you do your reflected ray to the normal. And then we trace these lines back. Again, we trace them back to where we believe they diverged from, because we don't know there's nothing back there. All we know is there's a line coming right at us. And it looks like it's something like here. We get a relatively interesting shape. Remember, this point was this back corner, so we've got my L here, and that's how that L would look in the mirror, which is similar to this L, but flipped. If you do everything perfect, which I clearly did not, you will find that this L is the same size, but just reversed. This is why plane mirror construction rays are often not asked upon you, because it's not easy to get it done perfectly. So what we do need to understand is the following. For plane mirrors, the image is behind the mirror. There's a word for that. There's a term for that. That means it's virtual. So this is a virtual image. All virtual images the image is not actually where the light originates. So remember, this whole side is actually darkness. The light did not exist over here. It existed over here. But since the image is over here, it's virtual. For plane mirrors, the image is also upright. It doesn't flip. This is actually true for all virtual images. All virtual images are upright. For plane mirrors, the magnification stays the same, so image size does not change. We also find out for plane mirrors, they flip left to right, or they use the term mirror reflection. Left and right switch sides. So what was on the right side on this side is now on the left side on the other side. So it flips left to right. And then lastly, and probably the most important aspect, is the distance the object is away from the mirror, which we call d sub o for object distance, needs to equal the distance the image is behind the mirror. So di equals do. That's it for plane mirrors. Thank you.